let's learn how to take this image and then translate it into this. I mean, you may not believe it, but this is not Tom Cruise recording a YouTube tutorial for you. It is me, one little coder. And in this video, I wanted to take you through a new approach for image editing using stable diffusion. This is called Lee edits or Ledits, L E D I T S. It uses two different concepts. One is DDPM inversion. And the second one is semantic guidance, also known as Sega. So we're not going to get into the technical details a lot, but I would start this video with a little bit of technical details about how is it doing. Then we're going to jump directly into the Gradio application, which the Hugging Face team has kindly put together. And we're going to use that to create or edit images like this. And we're going to look at different aspects of it. So this is more around the application of Lidits than actually learning how Lidit actually work. So to start with, what is even happening? Like this is how I did this. So I uploaded my image here and I just went here and then selected Tom Cruise and then wow, Tom Cruise is there sitting, taking a selfie probably like with my room, everything in my background. Some of you might actually say it's probably like image to image, but this is not exactly image to image. And that's why this is very, very fascinating for me because this is real. Well, let's quickly jump into the paper. So real, real image editing with DDPM inversion and semantic guidance. Hugging Face team has put together this. If you look at this picture, so you've got a picture with a bowl and uh, the bowl has got a lemon and um, you can go there and then say you want a wooden bowl using DDPM inversion, it can change it. But now you can do more around it because you can also have Sega semantic guidance there. And that's what this is happening the, with the Sega guidance, you can change the lemon into let's say apple or you want to change it to something else. And as you go down, you can see a lot of examples of the same thing happening. So what this idea is, is you take the existing stable diffusion model. You don't have to do any fine tuning. You don't have to do any new model building. You like literally take the existing model while the denoising is happening, while the DDPM process is happening. You first try to use the input image and then try to create the output image based on the input image. And that's what if you see these examples, the examples, you can see this is the input image and the output image is trying to do something very, very similar to the input image while the denoising is happening. And then you have got the semantic guidance that tries to add or remove whatever that is to happen. Now, having said that, I would not go deep into this, but if you want to read more details around it, I would strongly encourage you to first go read the Sega paper, which is the semantic guidance paper, because this is built on top of it. But Hugging Face team has kindly put together this amazing um, application or the Hugging Face Spaces where you can go see. So all you have to do is upload an input image and then add some details which I will currently cover and then you will get an output image. In this case, I uploaded the red pajama or llama with red pajama and then asked it to give me Elon Musk as an output and it gave me. I don't know how many of you are old enough to remember when vector embeddings became a big deal. One of the things that used to always happen is like, man uh, plus king uh, minus woman is equal to queen. This was like a very, very famous trend at that point. People like were mind blown, like how these kind of embeddings thing work. And what we are currently going to do is almost similar in terms of like how we formulate what we want to do. So mentally you need to be very clear about what you want. Like for example, you take a picture like this and you want to make sure what you want this picture to be translated. And when you want to do that, you have two different ways to do that. One, let me first uh, refresh this so that you can actually see. When you have an input image, you have two different ways to do that. One, you can go with semantic guidance. The second one, you can do it with a DDPM inversion. And sometimes it could be a combination of both. That is exactly what you would see here in this paper. So you have got Lidits, which is doing both. Uh, but if you just do DDPM inversion, how is it going to look like? Something that you can actually go through a lot of examples and then see. So when you go here, when you upload an image for the first time, that image, you can, you have multiple options to do one. You can go there, add concepts, remove concepts, and that concept could be of three types. So one, it could be like anything random. It could be a style. It could be an object in the image, or it could be a face. But other than semantic guidance, the Sega, you can do DDPM inversion as well. So that's why you describe here. If we look at the examples here, so you've got the input image and all you're going to do is you're going to add a concept called glass. This does not have glass and you are not telling it where to add the glass. So all you're saying is I want glasses to be added and the DDPM is nothing like it's, it's optional empty. And at the end, you're going to get the same image or similar image with glass in it. That's one thing. 
The second thing what you can do is you can do multiple things. For example, you can take an image like this. One, you can take one particular that is already present in the image. For example, your butterfly, you're taking the butterfly out. So this is like minus butterfly plus B. You're adding the B to it. So you're taking the butterfly out minus butterfly plus B. And along the process, you're taking that image and then making it an oil paint. So that's what you're saying. I want an oil paint. So three things are happening here. Just to be clear, you gave an input image, removed the butterfly, added the honeybee and made the entire image a an oil paint. So this is something that you can do with Lidits. Now let's go back to my own image. Uh, let me refresh this once again. I'm going to add my own image here. And when I add my own image, this is my image, the image that I shot, not, not a great image, but let's say I've got this image. Now I can go here and add a concept called sunglasses. For example, I can say sunglasses. Do I want to add it or remove it? I can go add it. Now you can see that it is actually trying to do the, the inversion process, DDPM inversion. I can add sunglass and I can either keep my DDPM in description like that, or I can leave it. I can remove it also. You will get slightly different result whenever you do this kind of thing. Now click edit your image and then wait for this image to be processed. So what we are trying to add is we are trying to keep my picture intact and then add sunglasses to the picture. It may not 100% work out because also you're trying to keep the entire face element. So like, <laughs> like, like you can see that it, it is, they just try to understand that this is a man with a beard and all we are trying to do sunglasses. It tried to keep my hair. Like you can see this, this, this particular part, it tried to keep that particular part intact and it tried to keep my, you know, the prayer mark as well intact. But if you see everything else, it's, it's tried to play around with it, like my beard. And one of the reason why I pick my own image is because you can see real time in the video, how it looks and it, you can also see how it is changing. So as you can see that it has done a pretty good job, like for a random man, but it didn't, it didn't keep my face. It's not me. It's not me there. And that's, that's, that's what you learn more about this. When you, as you go on, when you try to replace your complete face with certain things, the same thing you, you saw with the painting, the painting had like the painting itself had changed a little bit, but that's how it works. So let's, let's remove this. Let, let's remove this. And then maybe we can say, um, instead of this, I want to add Elon Musk. I want to eat, add Elon Musk as a face, add it. So now it's again going to do the processing and I'm going to click edit your image. Now it's going to take my image and put Elon Musk there. And it'll be also interesting to see if it is going to retain the glass it is there. So that's, that's another interesting factor because that's also part of the face. It didn't. So now, now you can actually see Elon Musk and it, it kept my, the entire uh, jacket intact. It kept my like the lamp intact. Uh, it kept the smile intact, but it is Elon Musk. So as you can see now, Elon Musk is literally there with, uh, with, with, with a very beautiful smile and you can see that it is doing a good job and you can try with this a lot. Like for example, now you have got Elon Musk, you can add one more concept. You can say, I want, a, let's say a hat. Okay. Add hat as an object and add it. Once you add it, you can again, like after this process is finished, which is the semantic guidance process. You can again click edit your image that will ultimately add the hat to your image. So it, it's trying to create a hat. Ideally, you are not telling it where to put the hat. Like in a typical image to image, you would also, you know, try to select where you want that to happen here. You are not saying that where that hat should ideally go on. But as you can see, let's, I mean, like before I praise the system, let's, let's verify for the image and it's currently running on their own machine. I didn't put the hat. As you can see, it didn't put the hat because maybe it didn't, it didn't see where it can put a hat. That's okay. So what I can do now is I can add a, a painting, like I can add a description and I can say, make it a Van Gogh painting. I don't know if I'm pronouncing Van Gogh correctly. Van Gogh, Van Gogh, Gogh. Anyways, let's see Van Gogh painting and let's see if it can happen. So I'm, I wanted to take the existing image slap Elon Musk's face on it and then change the style of it and make it a Van Gogh painting. So that's what I've asked it to do. And uh, let's see how efficiently it can do. And like I was saying, it is currently running on Hugging Face's own 810 GPU. 
And I guess you can also run it on a Google Collab notebook. Let me know in the comment section if you would like to see a Google Collab tutorial of the same so you don't have to rely on anybody else's GPU. Uh, that'll be so cool. Like if, if it happens, that'll be really cool. Right now somebody else is using and also um, as a matter of fact, if you use it uh, when uh, US is awake, probably you would see like the queue waiting time higher because a lot of people would be using. If you see, if you use it when US is not awake, then probably you would get it processing faster. And as you can see, US is probably getting up right now. And uh, that's, that's why, oh, <laughs> this, this, <laughs> this, it's ideally instead of making it a painting, it actually made uh, Van Gogh also as part of the image with Elon Musk. So this is, this is how basically you make changes, but you want to make any additional like advanced changes. You can go here and then play with the parameters like guidance scale is definitely one thing that you can always play with and then see kind of um, the strength that you want to give. And also for every concept that you add, you can change the guidance scale, like how hard you want it to be applied to that image, um, how desperate, like how strong you want it to be applied. So you can always play with the guidance scale for anything that you add here. But also you can play with the overall settings as well. Like um, for the DDPM inversion, what kind of guidance scale you are looking at for the Sega options, what kind of you know parameters that you want to play with, the, especially the threshold. And um, you can also see the reconstruction, like how the reconstruction process happens when you upload an input image and then try to do DDPM inversion. So overall, this is like a fascinating, fascinating aspect of how you can do image editing. I mean, I think it's mind blowing the way we can edit image these days. Uh, especially like ma like look look at the look at the Elon Musk picture like it is quite honestly like for me unbelievable that I just like took a couple of seconds like 10 seconds or something upload an image get keeping everything intact get like an Elon Musk um, face ish even within Photoshop I would take more time like honestly like I've been I've used Photoshop a lot and I would take more time even with Photoshop but this is super fascinating once again kudos to the hugging face team for putting together this entire uh, entire thing, Lidits, which is uh, image editing using DDPM inversion and semantic guidance. All the required links, the links that we discussed will be linked in the YouTube description, like below the like button, please check it out. And if you have got any thoughts or questions, or in fact, like if you want to see a Google collab based tutorial, let me know in the comment section, I'll try my best to put together another tutorial, which you can use it on Google collab to run it. I'm not sure if the memory would allow, but I can at least attempt um, to try that. See you in another video. Happy prompting.